Come on, dude. You gotta do something for your birthday. Sero stared at the text, the light of his screen illuminating his helmet while he texted Kaminari back. I guess. Maybe just drinks with you guys. I really haven't thought much about it. As soon as he had sent the text, he waited for a reply while roaming the streets of Musatafu at night. He was the unfortunate soul from the agency he worked under to patrol the graveyard shift this week, taking his stroll by foot rather than by tape. There had been some run-ins with other local heroes and pros alike, who also roamed the streets at such a late hour. But for the most part, Sarah had been on his own, taking the opportunity every once in a while to catch up with his friends via text. Especially because of one event in particular. Well, if you say so, sucks having you do the graveyard patrol. Sero grinned before texting Kaminari back, jumping on a conversation the both of them strung along all week. Yeah, well, it beats having to babysit someone. Hey, come on, man. Sure, no one wanted to be near them, and they got pushed onto me. But hey, when you're a hero, gotta do the job. Sero's grin widened, rebutting Kaminari with another thought that crossed his mind. You like them, don't you? Come on, you can't admit it. It's my birthday after all. There was a silence afterwards while Sero stared at his phone, noticing the reply icon flashing in view. If it wasn't for Kaminari, he would have at least been conversing with Kirishima, maybe even Mina, at this time. The one time he tried to message Bakugo, he received no reply, assuming that the explosive man would have been asleep at this hour, or later, for that matter. Throughout the week, Sarah had found very little crime around his region, let alone anything stimulating to keep him occupied or focused on the task at hand. Aside from the occasional breaking and entering, there wasn't any excitement. Just the rare passerby or quick conversation with fellow graveyard patrollers. If anything, the talks he had with his friends about his birthday were the most that he got out of this week of the graveyard shift ranging from venue choices, activities, and even the occasional discussion of setting him up, courtesy of Mina. Sarah only smiled at his friends' antics. He was only happy to see them, catch up, and have a few drinks. No more, no less. The sound of his phone signaled Kaminari's response with the dark-haired hero reaching out to unlock his phone when suddenly something caught his eye by the corner of an intersection ahead. Across the way, he spotted someone entering a large building from one of its windows, noticing that it was one of the largest museums in the city. Even in the dim light of the street lamps, it didn't hide the sheen that reflected off from the intruder's outfit. Pocketing his phone, he immediately made his way to the museum, shooting tape towards the window to follow suit and enter. Normal protocol would be to call for assistance. However, Sarah had dealt with a few crooks of the same M.O. the past week. How different could this one be compared to the rest? Sneaking through the second floor, Sarah made his way towards the foyer, soon spotting the shadow of the intruder around the corner their running footsteps echoing around the empty floor. He quietly pursued after them, taking every precaution to not alert another soul. Every turn he made, he would catch the glimpse of the shadow, paces ahead of him. Eventually, the footsteps stopped. Sero immediately stilled, creeping towards the beams that overlooked a section of the museum that displayed their prize jewel, Pyonite, shimmering in the display lights that illuminated the case. 
A puff of smoke blew in the air in the corner of his eye, watching the lasers that protected the jewel bounce and flicker within the plume. A moment of silence passed, before the sound of a high-pitched tune played in the room, the ringing penetrating through his helmet and causing him to wince. He wished he could take his helmet off then and there. In the meantime, you casually walked across the room with a small device in your hand, producing this ringing noise until you reached the display case, the device fizzling and burning out in your gloves. You knew it was a once-off. No time to locate the security system in the place, and above all, the lasers would return leaving you trapped. You heard the hum of the lasers again as soon as the device was destroyed. You shrugged off the dilemma, eyeing the tiny jewel in the display case while you made work into the glass, carving into it carefully, with delicate precision. It just felt too easy, you thought, while you reached in and grabbed the jewel with your fingers before placing it in a small box to stow away. Until the main light switched on, and the lasers were in view. Hate to break it to you, but you seem to be stuck, spoke a voice in the room, grabbing your attention from your work, pocketing the tiny box in your utility belt. Turning around, you eyed all of the lasers that trapped you inside, only working with a small space that surrounded the display cabinet. But your eyes drifted to another, standing outside of the lasers, his fingers hovering over the light box switch by the room's large entrance. <laughs> You're making this way too easy, he continued, his helmet hiding his face from view. You eyed the costume, the colors, the arrangement, the elbows. Huh, cellophane? You asked, a smirk appearing on your lips while you leaned against the display cabinet. What are you doing in this neck of the woods? This late at night? Sero inspected the room, noticing that the lasers were projected from the ground and not from the walls. Unconventional for security, but the museum had a reputation for such things. Even so, there was enough room for a walkway around the circumference of the room, allowing him to walk inside while keeping an eye on you, the intruder in question. You've heard of me? He asked, curious. Well, yeah, the taping hero. I just didn't expect to find you on the graveyard shift. Sero stared at you, taken aback by the words you chose, terms that the heroes used often. Relax, this isn't my first dig. You reassured, noticing how his body reacted to your responses. His helmet covered his face, making it difficult for you to notice the minute changes in expression. However, Sarah was quick to recompose himself. Uh, I wouldn't be concerned about that, he answered. I'd be more worried about yourself. <laughs> Please, do I look worried? Breaking and entering? Theft? Doesn't look good on a rap sheet. But by the looks of it, you probably have a few notches already. He inspected the outfit. Black and orange, with a fur trim, a utility belt with small tools, and your face in full view. No mask at all. It was odd. Every other break and enter culprit had a mask. At least the cheap and nasty stocking or beanie over their head. But staring at you, your face was in full view. Except for the heavily designed eye makeup you donned. Like what you see? You teased, arms crossed while you still rested against the display case. I get that a lot. Well, when I get caught. So you're not a good thief then? No, I am a good thief. You corrected before another thought crossed your mind. 
You know, it's so hard to find riveting and stimulating conversation with my captors. I hope you don't disappoint. <laughs> so, uh, you wanna talk? Gladly. If it's to pass the time. Sure. Ask me anything. I'm an open book. Sero stopped in his tracks, eyeing you suspiciously. Were you buying time? Was this a trick? The lasers were in full view, crossing each other haphazardly, which made it hard for anyone to enter in and out. Aside from the electronic device you donned, it seemed you deliberately trapped yourself inside. Why? Hmm? You hummed in reply, curious of Sero's simple question. Why that, of all things? Sarah pointed towards the empty display cabinet, while you eyed it, following his motions. Because it's pretty? You answered. I would love to put a ring on it, but sadly, gotta pay the bills somehow. Uh, there are better ways to earn a living, you know. Yeah, but... You droned, holding on to a thought before you turned to Sero with a lazy smirk. That's boring. This is fun. You swung your hand to and fro, pointing between the both of you and insinuating the situation at hand. Sero watched as you casually stood there, without a care in the world, without any ounce of stress, or anxiousness. You were calm and collected, as if this was a normal conversation. If not for the current state of affairs, he swore that you treated this like a talk between strangers at any undisclosed location. Cafe, bus stop, bar, anything but the museum. You're not an ordinary thief, he commented, continuing to pace around you. What makes you say that? Every other petty thief I've encountered would be panicking, attempting to escape, or fight back. But you're just standing there, waiting. Well, I've got nothing else better to do. You replied, pacing with the very little space you had between the lasers and the display case. You caught me, fair and square. And we're just waiting for the backup to arrive. You emphasized on backup with your fingers in the air, a tone of disbelief in the words you spoke. <laughs> if anything, noble hero, I'm just whiling away the time now. What's the ETA? Ten? Five minutes? Sero stopped in his tracks again. Silent which only caused your smirk to widen. Oh, so, uh, no backup then? Sero bit his lip. It was true. He didn't call backup at all. So far, it seemed like a simple snatch and grab, but with the lasers in the way, there was no way he could apprehend you without tripping the security system himself. You clicked your tongue realizing the oversight Sarah had just realized on his own. <laughs> Whoop! Little rabbit jumped the gun, huh? Rabbit? Sorry, I'm not Deku. Your eyes quirked at the drop of the name, eyeing Sarah as he continued to pace the room. Deku, huh? The rising star in the rankings? You questioned. Your tone filled with childlike wonder. You guys close? How about Ground Zero? Heard of him? Or Shoto? Charge Bolt maybe? <laughs> Sounds like you're a fan. <laughs> Interrupted Sero, unable to stop the tiny chuckle that escaped his throat while he spoke. Even more so out of all that name dropping you heard of Charge Bolt. Let's just say his application of his quirk interests me. You explained with a smirk. 
Besides, Rabbit, I think learning more about pro heroes from an actual pro hero would hold more clout than talking to the locals who've tried to catch me. Stop calling me Rabbit. You sighed exasperatedly, yet playful in your tone, while you followed in Sero's stead around the room. Uh, all right, fine, Bucky. And to clarify, I'm not a petty thief. Sero stopped in his tracks again, staring at you through his helmet, with a dumbfounded look on his face. Throughout the entire conversation, he had received more information about you than the other way around. It confused him on how much you were giving away. Maybe you were an open book, after all. Perhaps you were really trapped and just surrendered to the inevitable. But something felt odd. It felt like you genuinely wanted to learn more. You playfully smiled at him, watching his stance speak more volumes than you would ever receive from mere expression. The sound of a text message beeped around the room catching your attention while you eyed the taping hero digging into his pockets of his costume. He pulled out his phone, now alight, noticing a few notifications on his screen, all from Kaminari. Hey, come on. If you saw them, you'd think they're cute too. Anyway, totally good for drinks. I just know I need to find someone else to take my post so I can at least make it. And before I forget, Mina had a good choice of venue. You just gotta invite Bakugo in the morning. You know, when the dude's awake. Didn't know you were popular. You spoke in turn, eyeing the phone in Sero's hand. This late at night, I'm going to say back up. Which is actually not a smart move given your phone isn't silent. Or partner? Or booty call? No! Exclaimed Sero while he texted back. It's just my birthday. Oh, your birthday? You asked, curious. Then what the hell are you doing here? On the graveyard shift. Sounds like some rotten luck to me. Well, heroes have no choice sometimes concluded Sero, sending a text on his phone before pocketing it away in his costume again. This shift exists because of criminals like you. You gasped in feigned shock, with a playful curl to your lips. <gasps> Criminal? <laughs> I prefer entrepreneurial collector. And besides, you are the first pro hero that I could speak to because, really, the amount of local heroes that I've spoken to don't hold a candle to you guys. Flattery will only get you so far. But I can get close. Right, Bucky? Sero did not reply. All you were met with was silence in the room, except for the soft hum of the lasers that surrounded you. Your eyes trailed along Sero's body, from his pockets to his helmet. You were aware of Cellophane's presence in the hero community, usually staying local near his agency's region. However, with the rankings of every other hero in the scene, you felt he was a little underrated, understated, and probably misunderstood. The thought of it caused you to smirk. <clears throat> Like what you see, darling, commented Sero with a teasing tone, taking your eyes back onto his helmet. Your smirk widened at the gesture. He was learning quickly. Too quickly. You just informed backup, haven't you? You asked catching Sarah off guard. That moment on the phone, whether it was friends or not, could have been the opportunity he needed to call for reinforcements. You stretched your limbs in the air, 
calmly dusting your sides, and standing by the lasers as close as possible. Uh, well, so much for getting to know each other. You hopped on the spot as if you were ready to run a mile, the anticipation bubbling in your stomach. You've heard of how quick Cellophane was with his quirk. It all came down to timing. But you're trapped, there's no way you- Sarah's words were interrupted by a bright flash of orange light from your hands, akin to a flame, before you threw the ball through the lasers, teleporting yourself on the other side. You made a quick dash towards the museum's exit, but not before a string of tape caught your ankle, tripping you onto the floor with a thud. You winced in pain before you were pulled by the ankle towards the pro hero, shooting another string of tape from his other elbow to ensnare you. It all came down to timing. You quickly maneuvered on the floor, throwing another ball of fire in another direction, teleporting you out of his grasp. It was a game of cat and mouse, escaping the numerous rolls of tape that Sero shot while you continued to slip through his clutches. That is, until he trapped you by the foyer. Now, tangled in his tape, close to him, he hovered over you on the floor. You watched his body heave, probably out of breath from the chase. You were so close to escaping, but the smile on your face couldn't be erased. It was thrilling, more so than the local heroes who didn't put up too much of an effort at the time. Sero held you down, keeping you tangled with no way of utilizing your quirk to escape, finally having your hands bound against you. After watching your quirk in action, he adapted to the changes. Except for the unpredictable nature of it, timing it enough to catch you on your destination. The heat of his breath circulated inside his helmet, feeling it against his now sweat-covered skin. <laughs> I underestimated you, Cellophane. You remarked with a grin, twiddling your fingers in view. You're as quick as they say you are. <sighs> They? The general public, and the fan base you have going somewhere. Sero eyed your form below him, confused, yet intrigued about your calm state of conversation. Despite the circumstances favoring him, you didn't change your demeanor since the showcase area. <sighs> My reputation precedes me. <sighs> He simply replied through bated breath. Uh, but why didn't you try to escape earlier? Uh. Sorry, Bucky. You apologized with a grin. Spoilers, but thank you for being the first person to actually hold my attention long enough for me to make a move. And also this. You raised your hands, still bound to the tape that tightened around your body, feeling the tug of it against your clothes. Your heart thrummed in your chest. You've never felt so invigorated during a heist. Even one as small as this, you thought. But all good things come to an end. Suddenly, from your fingers, light erupted, blinding Sarah point blank. He looked away, squeezing his eyes shut from the sudden burst of energy, before he turned back, peering through half-lidded eyes. His tape remained, but you had disappeared. Happy birthday, Bucky! He heard, spotting your silhouetted form up at the window you originally snuck through. Say hi to your friends for me! He watched your silhouette jump from the window disappearing into the night. He could only relieve himself from the tension that crawled through his muscles, standing on his feet to brush himself off and lifting his visor for some fresh air. Out of all the apprehended criminals, he let the big one get away. Still, with a sigh, he returned to the scene of the crime, 
walking through the museum and eyeing all of the tape left behind of his attempts to capture you. With the lasers still visible, he looked back at the display cabinet only to be shocked by his discovery. There, in the center, the Pyonite jewel still remained, sitting in a small box as if it were a piece of jewelry. He didn't see you leave it behind when you tried to escape. It made him wonder how quick you really were with your hands. However, something small sat next to it. A card? With precision, Sero shot his tape past the laser beams to catch the card, pulling it through just as quickly to retrieve it. It was simple, small, nothing fancy at all, but it was also freshly written on. Volpone? He mused. The name was written in the centre. A calling card, he thought. European? At least he got a name, and yet he wished Aoyama was here to translate. However, following the written words that encircled the name, Sarah's cheeks flushed a hint of pink. My birthday gift to you! No hassles tonight! Told you I wasn't petty, Bucky. He wondered if he would find you again, now with a name attached, until the sound of sirens echoed outside the museum doors. <laughs>